Three of the most common fields in finance are investment banking, equity research, and sales and trading. And if you're not really sure what the difference is between these three fields, then you've come to the right place. If you're new to the channel, welcome to Rare Liquid. My name is Ben, and from 2015 to 2018, I worked as an investment banking analyst at JP Morgan, and so I'm pretty familiar with these three fields. Today, for each of these three fields, I'll first be going over what you do, second, the hierarchy, then the hours and lifestyle, then compensation and exit ops, and lastly, some tips on how to figure out which field is right for you. But before we get started, quick shout out to our sponsor for today's video, Financial Edge, for helping make this video possible. All right, so jumping straight into it, let's first talk about what you do in each of these industries. Starting with investment banking, bankers really help clients with two things. The first is M&A, which involves the buying and selling of companies. And second are the raising of funds, either through debt deals or equity transactions, which come in the forms of things like IPOs. In general, banks provide financial advice for things like how much a company should be bought or sold for, how much debt a company can take on, or at what valuation a company should IPO. The bank guides the client throughout these transactions and takes a cut just like a realtor would when selling a home. As a more junior banker, you typically work on four things, which include building financial models in Excel, creating pitch books for meetings on PowerPoint, conducting research by looking through filings and industry reports, and either coordinating or participating in meetings. Your experience also depends largely on whether you join a coverage group where you work on deals only in one specific industry like tech, healthcare, or consumer, versus if you join a product group like the M&A or equity capital markets group where you're only working on M&A or equity deals. In case you wanna learn more about what it's like to work on an actual deal, feel free to check out this video right here where I worked on a $6 billion deal. Moving on, equity research focuses on creating timely reports on companies and industries to sell them to institutional investors like hedge funds. In equity research, there are three main types of reports that you create. The first is an initiating coverage report, which is roughly 20 to 100 page deep dive analysis on a company that covers things like the business model, market size, competitors, and valuation. The second are also 20 to 100 page long industry overviews or primers, which cover an entire sector and provide information on the latest trends, market commentary, key players, and a whole lot more. The third are company update reports, which usually are more frequent and shorter at around one to 10 pages. And these are issued whenever a big news event hits, like after earnings or the acquisition of another company. As a more junior equity research analyst, you focus most of your time on numbers two through four here. And so you're doing the bulk of the research, putting together reports on Word and building operating models and valuation work for companies that you cover. As you become more senior, your job shifts a lot more to numbers one and five here, where you're focusing more on building relationships by speaking with management teams and investors who seek your insights into the markets. Last up is sales and trading, which as the name suggests, can really be separated into two separate functions. On the sales side, salespeople build relationships with clients like hedge funds and asset managers to encourage them to buy and sell securities like stocks, bonds, derivatives, and commodities. And as you may have guessed, salespeople earn commissions. So the more that they sell, the more they and the firm earn. On the trading side, traders execute trades by market making for clients, which means getting them the best possible prices and traders earn money from both commissions and the bid ask spread, which is a price difference between securities purchased and sold. There are two main types of traders, which are flow traders and prop traders. And for what we're talking about, we're only gonna focus on the former. Flow traders essentially help clients execute on large trades and ensure that they get the best price. And so flow traders at bulge bracket banks are not really investors, and instead you should think of them as middlemen. I have a few friends at hedge funds and they've kind of told me about what they do and whenever they make a really big trade that let's say is a few hundred thousand dollars or even millions of dollars, it's not as easy as what you and I would do where you would just buy something on TD Ameritrade and the trade would execute. When you're executing these really, really large trades, you have to make sure there's enough liquidity, liquidity on the buying or selling side and you kind of have to make sure that there's enough demand on each side and then make sure that that trade happens. And that's basically what flow traders do. Now I know I went through a lot here, so let me briefly summarize these three different fields. In investment banking, bankers help companies expand their business through M&A or fundraising, and your best friends are PowerPoint and Excel. In equity research, the focus is on creating timely reports for investors to help guide their investment decisions, and your best friends are WordDocs and Excel. Lastly, in sales and trading, you help investors earn money and deliver returns, and your best friends are Bloomberg and your phone. Before moving on, if you're interested in a career in finance, one resource I highly, highly recommend is Financial Edge. The company's founder, Alistar, is literally the instructor who taught me and hundreds of other analysts during my summer training at JP Morgan, and he's this British guy who has a really great, good-natured personality and cares a lot about being a good teacher. 
Financial Edge's instructors train the analysts at the top four banks who pay tens of thousands of dollars if not more, and you could get the same lessons for just a few hundred dollars, so I really think it's worth it. They have a bunch of different courses like the Investment Banker, which is great for those interested in banking and equity research, and the Trader, which is perfect for those interested in sales and trading. So if you're interested in jumpstarting your career in finance, then I highly, highly recommend checking out Financial Edge. You can use my code RareLiquid25, which you can see in my description below, to get 25% off. All right, now moving on, let's briefly go into the hierarchy for each of these fields. The titles for investment banking and sales and trading are largely the same, and they go from analyst to associate to VP to director to managing director. From analyst to vice president, it often takes two to three years to get promoted, and then from VP to managing director, it can take anywhere from three to five years depending on the firm and performance. In contrast, the hierarchy for equity research can be a little bit confusing. Straight out of college, you start off as an associate, and then you can be promoted to an analyst after two to four years. But within that analyst title, there are different levels like VP, senior VP, or director, and then managing director, and they're all called analysts. In general, job security is pretty strong across these three fields, especially as you become more senior and have good performance and have a lot of relationships set up with clients. With that said, one important thing to note is that equity research is shrinking as an industry due to data being so widespread and accessible via the internet, and sales and trading divisions are shrinking a lot due to electronic trading. Combined with low turnover for senior positions, these two fields can be a little bit hard to climb up the ladder, but investment banks overall are pretty, pretty meritocratic, and so if you're good at your job, then you probably will just keep climbing the ranks. Next up, let's go into the hours and lifestyle. Starting off with banking, I think most people know by now that it's common for analysts to put in 70 to 100 hours a week, which means that you're typically working starting at 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. until or past midnight on most days and working anywhere from 0 to 20 hours on weekends. As time goes on, your hours become much more manageable and roughly speaking, I'd say associates work 60 to 90, VPs work 50 to 80, and directors work 40 to 60 hours per week. The reason junior bankers in particular have to work such long hours is because there's just so much to do in such a short period of time. Whenever a company wants to buy another one or sell itself, then these are pretty confidential transactions that only a few members of the company know, typically only the C-suite executives and a few VPs and maybe a few management members, but basically there's a huge incentive for companies to conduct these transactions extremely quickly because there's just so much confidential information and they don't really want other employees knowing. In addition to all of this, on each deal team, you typically just have one analyst and one associate. And so this means you have a ton of responsibility as a junior banker, which is great, but it also means you have to get a lot done in a very short period of time. Things are not always super, super crazy in banking though. It usually only is if you have a live transaction or live deal, which means that a client is engaged and you're working towards a transaction. When you're not working on any live deals, you typically can leave the office anywhere from 8 to 10 p.m. and have zero weekend work. And if you actually wanna learn more about what banking is like from a day in the life of an analyst or a week in the life, then feel free to check out those videos. Moving on to equity research, the hours overall are lower at around 60 to 70 hours on average per week, but there are brief periods of extreme intensity that rivals or even surpasses banking by reaching 100 hours. To explain why this is, equity research teams usually consist of a pretty small group of three to six associates and analysts, and they usually cover anywhere from 10 to 30 different companies. When something like earning season comes up or a big transaction happens out of nowhere, then the analysts and associates on that team have to put together reports and update models and get that analysis out to investors ASAP in a matter of hours at times or the next day, which can involve a lot of high stress work. Based on this personal anecdote I found from a person who worked in both banking and equity research, it can be a lot more stressful to have to provide analysis and publish reports on five companies reporting earnings by tomorrow in equity research versus having three days to build out a financial model and presentation in banking. The interesting thing also is that as you progress in your career, your hours don't actually get that much better because you will always have to wake up a few hours earlier than the market opens and have to work when the market closes a little bit more. And so you may work 50 hours or so as a more senior analyst, but many still work around 60. One really big benefit though is that Saturdays are very sacred in equity research and you may work a few hours on Sunday to prepare for the week, but largely speaking, the weekend is yours. The last thing to mention is that given these small teams in equity research, you have a much more close-knit team whose culture is dictated by the senior analysts. And this is in contrast to banking where as an analyst, you're often working with multiple associates, VPs, and directors at the same time. Last up for sales and trading, your hours pretty much mirror equity research because both fields are dictated by the markets, but you don't have those highly intensive periods of 100-hour weeks. 
Sales and trading is also probably what most people typically think of when they hear about Wall Street with a bunch of people frantically going on calls on the trading floor. With that said, as I mentioned before, a lot of trading has become automated with one scary example being Goldman's cash equities desk, which has gone from 600 traders in 2000 to only two today. So trading floors are probably not as bustling as they have been in the past, but it can still be a great career for someone who loves the markets. And in addition to that, the skill of being a great trader has become so specialized that it can still be a highly lucrative job. Another unique aspect of sales and trading culture is that the hierarchy is relatively flat given that you work on a trading floor and sit right next to everyone from the analysts to the managing directors. Before moving on to the next section, if you're interested in recruiting for finance or investment banking, I'm selling my resume and cover letter that got me into JP Morgan down in the description below. I also have a resume and cover letter guide which involves all of the best tips I've compiled from being a JP Morgan UC Berkeley recruiting captain for two years while I was at JP Morgan. So if you're interested in any of those, feel free to check them out in the description below. All right, now next up, let's go into compensation and exit opportunities. For banking, here's a chart I previously put together for investment banking compensation, which you can pause to take a look at. Also, if you wanna learn more about investment banking compensation, you can also check out this video right here. Next up, here's a chart for equity research, which is probably a bit lower than what the actual pay is because this chart is a little bit old. And lastly, here's a chart for what you can make in sales and trading, which also is probably a little bit lower on average. I kept that section pretty short because even though I did speak with people who worked at sales and trading and equity research, it was pretty hard to really understand how much your compensation would be, especially above the analyst slash associate level for equity research. And so, just giving you ballpark numbers there, but the, I think the main takeaway here is that immediately out of college, you can expect to make six digits. And when you continue on with your career, especially if you're good and get to the more senior levels, you can expect to make at least a million or more per year. Next up in terms of exit opportunities, the world is your oyster when it comes to investment banking and you can join a private equity firm or hedge fund, join an industry firm in operations, investor relations, corporate development, and a whole lot more. For equity research, you pretty much get the same exit opportunities minus private equity and a good number of equity research analysts go into hedge funds. Lastly, sales and trading provides the most narrow set of exit ops that primarily revolve around the markets because you don't really gain a lot of operational skills. Lastly, let me provide some really, really brief tips on how to choose between these three careers. You should go into investment banking if you don't mind putting in long hours, highly value how to build financial models and or really want to go into private equity. You should go into equity research if you want more reasonable hours with brief periods of high intensity work, if you enjoy writing and research, and want to thoroughly understand businesses or industries to eventually go and work at a hedge fund. Lastly, you should go into sales and trading if you highly value having a good work-life balance, absolutely love the financial markets and want to trade your whole life, and want to work with complex financial products as those are the ones that are hard to automate. All right, so that concludes the video. If you have any questions at all, let me know down in the comments below. And also feel free to check out Financial Edge if you want to get a jump start in your career in finance. You can also check out my resume and cover letter down in the description below. And with that said, thank you so much as always for watching. Hope to catch you in the next video. Thanks and peace out. I'm